Hey guys, Chris Sarda, Chaos and Comics. It is that time of the week again, the comic haul day. So there we go. Here's a bunch of bags and boards. I took them out so there's no glare. Um, I got a bunch of stuff, some stuff I'm just going to show that I got a while ago. And, um, and well, let's get to, um, let's start with the new stuff. So first the new Marvel stuff I picked up. Um, uh, what is that? Powers of 10. Number four, that's probably going to be read as soon as uh, I stop doing this. There's a couple that go to the top of the list for sure, and that's one of them. Uh, Venom, I rarely do this, but I got two colors of Ven two covers of Venom. That's the regular cover. There's the maker. He's sort of growing on me as a character, sort of interesting. And you know what? I like the Immortal variants. Um, in fact, I like them enough that I bought two. So, you know, the wraparound covers, geez, I wanted to fix the glare and all I did was make it worse. Wraparound covers and, um, and, uh, extremely cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, this was an accident. I thought this was, I thought this was, um, Avengers 23. I thought the new one came out. So I bought a second printing, which is sort of funny. Here is... Silver Surfer Black number four. This has been an incredible series. This one's going to the top of the pile two to read. And there's uh, Norrin Rad, the immortal variant. I don't really get it. I guess are they sort of turning into their character, except the way Hulk would? I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, Age of Conan Valeria. I like this. Um, I like this. The first issue pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, Symbiote of Vengeance, so another absolute carnage tie-in. I said I wasn't going to buy some of these, but some of them just look too cool. And I've been on a Ghost Rider kick. It seems right on time because they're bringing out a new Ghost Rider series, so uh, that's a coincidence. But this looked cool. Some of the variants look really cool too, but they're ratio variants, and I don't want to pay for those. Um, another wonderful cover uh, on a Absolute Carnage spin-off, so Carnage Deadpool. The first one was actually pretty good. Actually, it was a pretty generic comic, but the, one of the plots, one of the plot twists was cool. So, um, made me interested in that. Swordmaster 3, I have, this is all Marvel still. I have loved this um, very much. I don't know that other people have. I just opened up to a random page, and Gunji is just such a good artist, you know. I love that. I love it. So, this has been a, this was a, I think I'm purpose a wacky ride. Um, two of my favorites, uh, uh, Jerry Duggan, who's just a real solid writer for some of the weird offshoot stuff, and uh, uh, Juan Ferreira is pretty much incredible. I mean, the art in the first one was so good. I just like the choice. Like, that's just a silly picture. I get it. Pulling um, Punisher's van. But it, it's just beautiful. Just drawn beautifully, so. And last Marvel one is a Star Wars one. This is gonna go also to the top of the pile because how much do we know about Snoke? Not that much. And, you know, and spoiler alert for The Last Jedi, he's dead. So um, let's get to some of the stuff that uh, I recently got that I wanted to show. I've been trying to read more manga. And um, so I have this Lone Wolf and Cub, number one. It's thick, th very thick thing, but I want to read um, more what I know is classic or great, some of the uh, better uh, writers and authors and stuff than just jumping in with new stuff. I'm, I'm sure if someone only read manga, we would probably recommend them not to, you know, if they're interested, they should do it, buy some newer stuff, but they should probably jump into some classic runs to Neil Gaiman's Sandman, or if they're into superhero comics, various runs that are important of the last decade or so, you know, decade or so to stay current. Um, and this is the stuff I, before I get into indies, this is the stuff I got from Poland. So it is all in Polish. I do, you know, try to practice a little Polish since my wife is Polish. I'm not. So this is Shara Drużyna, a little bit cartoony. I think I have some of these in English, to be honest, which is good. That's even better. Looks like um, some kind of fantasy comic. I may own these already, to be honest. Uh, so those are pretty cheap. And then 
one of the things is you got to basically buy manga. Um, there's some comics, and I found a cool guy. Uh, my wife lived in more the south of Poland, but we visited the seaside. So the big city up there is called Gdansk. And uh, in German, it's Danzig. So, you know, it's very metal city. And I found a guy with, like, comic book comic books. And I'll get into that. But um, you do have to buy some manga because that's popular in the whole world. So I read number one of this. I think I reviewed it. I gave it an okay grade. But I found part two in Polish. And it was a pretty straightforward, simple, simple story. So, um, and also this is bigger in, in the Polish version. The American version I checked out from the library was like that small. So I got that. I sort of know what's going on in the story. So that's good for someone that's basic like me. Um, cross Gen. So just familiar with Cross Gen. Grabbed. This one is called Jejic uh, Konflikt Sumienia. And this one will take me some time, but it's. Um, Looked pretty cool inside. It's clearly, if this is uh, the cross-gen comics that we have in in the States here, it's clearly been uh, shrunk. This is by a, this is actually by a Polish uh, author and artist. I believe it's by Polish, it's by Polish creators. And it looked cool to me. Um, you know, I really like uh, creative coloring when it's not all you know, when there's uh, three color panels and stuff. So I wanted to make sure I bought something by Pol a Polish art artist. And this is called Po Life. This is very interesting. I'm not Japanese, but this is a sort of like a memoir book of a Japanese woman living in Poland. So it's her life as a Japanese person. And as best I can tell, she's comparing the cultures and whatnot. So I thought that'd be real interesting for me to um, sort of get that, th sort of get that third party compar comparison going on there. And then comic book wise, I have actually other stuff coming. Um, we just left before it came in the mail. This one is, um, uh, Zapalniczka z Pozitivką. Um, so it looks like a hard boiled crime thing. I got this just off the newsstand. Um, has that old school pulp feel to it. Two, three, Th three Star Wars books. And um, these are translations of Star Wars books I've read, although I don't know that I read <coughs> Poe Dameron. So this is like the first six issues of Poe Dameron. Uh, the uh, second, well, that's the first, that was the next six issues. And then this is um, part of uh, the beginning of Kieran Gillen's run on Star Wars, all in Polish. So. Polish people are still, and Europeans in general, still associate comics with kids. And um, this cost me a whole dime. And it was sitting with, uh, you know, the preschool books. <laughs> and uh, it's definitely, it definitely has some adult themes. Um, no nudity there, but you can even see it's not really even for kids at all. And then last but not least in this collection, I showed some of this already. Um, Roszynski was the classic Polish artist I was, uh, recommended and, um, oh, there's a soccer magazine and there's a metal hammer in Polish, a both. This is the easiest stuff for me to read because I pretty much know what's happening and more or less what they're going to say. Um, and that's Charlie. I don't even know what that is. I think that's a French writer, but it's translated. But, uh, everyone told me Roszynski, I think I should have gotten Thorgal, but this is what the guy gave me. This is Jan's. It's um, five parts. It's, you know, it has a very, very Euro feel. I think that the uh, writer is, is um, Belgian. But um, I'm excited to pop into that. So very interesting. And, you know, it has very, definitely has the old pulp feel to it. These are from the, um, from the 80s. So I stayed floppy. I'll probably, I think the Thor girls, I'll buy those in English from this same artist and a, and a different author. But, um, you know, and this is some like cross between fantasy and sci-fi, the best I can tell, but we'll see. So very cool, very fun. Okay, back to new books. 
real quick. Um, these are indies. There's only, only Batman here is from DC. I just haven't seen any DC I really wanted. Uh, the Dark Age number two. I enjoyed number one. I think that's a pretty good cover too. Um, and has, you know, it's almost a virgin cover. Uh, Chastity. I ordered this because it was the secret cover. Uh, as you guys know, I grab, I remember Chaos Comics from the 90s. If they're, you know, if I'm getting them for around a dollar, I'll pick them up. This is a new title from Dynamite who owns Chaos. And Chastity was sort of the, was not sort of, she was the vampire. To be honest, just flipping through it. I'm going to read it, of course, but this doesn't look that good. Um, and Chaos Comics back in the day were just a lot busier. A lot was going on in every page. The stories could be hit or miss, but some of them were pretty cool. But there's just a lot going on, and this, you know, this looks like optic nerve in color with a with a vampire or something. So a little bit too sparse for me. One of my favorite titles, Baby Teeth, is back. I have a feeling that it's not selling that well, that they took a break at the wrong time because they're re-offering old ones or whatever, but I still like it. I'll keep buying it. Not not an indie comic, but it's Batman 78 going to the top of the to read pile. Uh, Midnight Sky from Scout Comics. I can't remember what made me want this, but uh, I put it on my pool list and now it's here. It's sort of like a Drake song, except uh, with comics. And this one looks pretty good. I'm not sure what it's about, but you know, there seems to be some kind of zombie demon stuff going on. Um, two, uh, rock and roll biographies. Now the, um, the inker, and I think he's a finisher too, the way he puts it is, uh, is, is local to Vegas. And so, you know, they put this out with like local books and stuff, even though it's a national book, but I mean, it, I mean, the art is beautiful and, uh, as is the inking, that's a lot going on there as a black and white comic. And we don't, you don't get to see a lot of new black and white comics. And I know this doesn't fit the Ninja Turtles slash D and D sort of thing going on, but, um, uh, I like it just, oh man, that's really cool looking actually really, really cool looking. I'm really surprised. I really like that. Uh, Rolo Ledesma on pencils and Vic Moya on finishes. So that means he's actually drawing with the, um, with the pen. And there is System of Down. Um, still cool. A little bit of a little bit more like the, uh, just flipping through it a little bit more like the, not the Opeth one. The Opeth one had a lot of detail to like the Testament issue. So, um, Nestor uh, Tatiado is the illustrator. And. Vic Moya inks on chapter three. Nice. So those are cool. They're biographies. I, I, you know, I wish that they were like stories based on the band or their lyrics or something, but they're not. Um, one of my favorite titles. So this was one of those where I stopped buying until, or until I read them all. And so I got like five issues behind, four issues behind. And then, so I didn't pick up nine, but I caught up on the weekend and this book is incredible. I love it. And here's number nine. And then here's number 10. That looks like a spoiler. Uh, one was done here. Two Lost in Vegas comics. I actually think I own these or a piece of them. I got them for a buck, but it's Vegas. Lost in Vegas. You get it. That's what we're doing here. And this is disappointing. As much as I like this title, it didn't get to its second arc. And Gogor is ending with this book right here. And, you know, I saw a couple places that it was the series finale and the um the arc end of the arc finale and that it felt like it would come back but unfortunately ken Gehring is right here and he's uh letting us know that sort of what happened and i read part of it but i want to read the book first and then i'll read that explanation and last but not least another title i really really like sonata uh, this is going to the top of the pile to read i enjoyed it a lot they do do that fuzzy out digital art thing, which I don't like, but it's still cool. Anyway, that's a pretty big haul. New stuff was a, a big stack. And, um, and then the, some of the Polish stuff, 
I, I won this accident. This is my only slab. And I'll probably never buy a slab. I won this accidentally on, on eBay and accidentally meaning I did it on purpose, but it ended up being $12. But why would you slab this book? Profit number one. I think it's volume two. Uh, Chuck Dixon story. Not a first appearance, not anything. I'm pretty sure this is a dollar book uh, in, in real life, but here it is slapped. And I, I think it cost me 12 bucks. So my only slab and will probably be the only slab I ever own and I'll probably never be able to resell it. If someone comes in and breaks into my house, I can probably, I can probably hit them with it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching at Chaos and Comics on Instagram and Twitter. Have a great day.